That way, that way what my point is, we should get the 800 level plus the 1500 difference because they're a lovely community we have. You go to the church. That has nothing to do with That's right. That's it. Same church, but I'm confused. They got more rate because. Right. So that's all. Us. If nothing else, we should get two thousand. Same church, different views. Well, that doesn't have anything to do with that. Stupid. You on the building committee, and I attended the meeting, and you asked him that they be put on the note. You had a letter to the yet? Mm-hmm. But again, you should just put the. F- I want to talk to them so long that they could have made it yet. I think. I apologize that we started a little late this evening. We were in executive session and we needed to talk about some, some things for a little longer. Um, so if with that, we are now ready to start. If everyone could rise and I call the meeting to order and we'll say the pledge of the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, if I could ask if we could just stay uh, standing for one moment. Um, I would like to take a uh, moment to uh, have a moment of silence and recognize uh, Marion Kolick. Um, who was a resident here in North Kingstown as well as a teacher at the Wickford Middle School um, for a number of years, special education teacher, uh, unfortunately recently passed away. So if we could just uh, bow our heads in a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Thank you. All right, for the August 23rd, 2011, Lorene, could you please do the roll call? Linda Avanzato. Milvoid Benson. Here. Larry Cerisi. Here. William Mudge. Here. Kimberly Page. Here. Joe Thompson. Here. Richard Welsh. Here. Julia Held. Thank you. Yeah. All right, now we have calendars. August 30th, the first day of school. September 1st, Consolidation Committee Meeting, Central Administration Building at 5 p.m. September 5th, Labor Day, all schools and offices closed. September 14th, Policy Sub, 11 a.m., Central Administration Building. Thank you. Now we have two presentations. Dr.
Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Um, I just want to take a few minutes tonight to talk about uh, a topic that is very much on the minds of the educators in North Kingstown and throughout um, Rhode Island, um, and that is the new evaluation system that is uh, funded in large part by uh, the Race to the Top Dollars and uh, part of the reform efforts from the Department of Education and is being um, implemented in one way, shape, or form in, in every district. Uh, most districts in the state of Rhode Island have what is called the RIDE model, while there are some districts that are using an AFT model. Um, North Kingstown is part of the model that is uh, issued from RIDE, and most of the districts in the state are, are part of that. Um, it's going to work for me. Oh, excuse me, one second. Good. So um, I, I want to be brief about this tonight, and, and at a later date, I would like to come back uh, once I have received more training um, to fill you in on some of the details about this. So maybe mid-year, once I've learned a lot more about how this is playing out, um, I'd like to talk to you about it in some more detail. But for right now, this is, is what we're looking at. The new evaluation protocol is a very well-articulated tool, and that part I really like about this protocol. It is very clear on what it means to be, you know, to be an effective teacher. And so it gives teachers very clear guidelines about what they need to be doing, and it gives evaluators very clear guidelines in what they need to be looking for when they're in teachers' classrooms watching uh, what's going on. Uh, it forces our principals to be in classrooms, supporting teachers more. As a building administrator, I always felt that the best use of my time was when I was in teachers' classrooms watching what was going on and, and working with teachers to help people, you know, to help them get better. And so I'm very happy that that's going to be happening. Um, it also focuses more on student growth and meeting actual learning outcomes, less on inputs. And what I mean by that is, Traditionally, evaluation instruments tend to work in such a way where um, a lot of the inputs in a class, like uh, the teacher um, brings a good lesson plan to the classroom, uh, the teacher is prepared, the teacher is organized. Those are things that the teacher brings to the class. This instrument focuses on those things, but also focuses on the outcome. How much have kids actually learned during that school year? And that's a challenging item to assess. So under the, the negatives uh, for this, the administrative time and resources to do this work is going to be a big issue, and that's what I'm going to talk most about tonight. And it will force our administrators to do less of the other non-evaluation tasks that they have because it's going to take up much more of their time. And the other negative is in the issue of measuring student growth. There is what is called a Rhode Island growth model. Again, in a future presentation, I'll go into some detail about what that looks like. But just suffice it to say for tonight <laughs> that that issue is, it can be contentious because it measures basically grades uh, three through seven or so right now. Uh, a lot of times a student may have many teachers over the course of a day. And to what extent is each teacher responsible for that student's growth? And then there are also, as we all know, a number of factors other than a student's teacher that may play into how a student grows over the course of a year. Some of them having a lot to do with the school, and some of them may not have much to do with the school at all, like the family's own home life and, and the conditions at home, for instance. So that's an issue that everyone is kind of walking through together for the first time in the state of Rhode Island, and um, just wanted to make you aware of that tonight. This is, a, I asked, um, Morag Cronkite from Hamilton Elementary to talk to me a little bit about what this means to her. And I want to give you a little bit of an indication of how this would play out. In um, last year, 
2010-11. She had four teachers on a standard evaluation and eight teachers on a professional growth alternative evaluation. Those are the two basic formats teachers could be evaluated. And the first type it requires roughly about nine hours to go through the whole protocol. The second type about three to five hours for the protocol. So you can see where she had to evaluate about 12 teachers in her building last year for a total of roughly 64 hours. This year, she would have to evaluate every teacher in her building, every teacher who has a classroom with kids. That would not include a nurse, guidance counselor, people like that. They will be on our old tool for this first year. The second year, however, they will be part of this group. So, so in actuality, that second number, now that I think of it, 2012 to 13, would even be higher. But as you can see, that number goes from 64 hours of her time. Well, Mr. Thompson is not here. Um, oh, okay. okay, I'm going to call the August 23rd, 2011 meeting back to order. And we are now on to number five, superintendent's report. I think I'm all set. Oh, okay. Thank you. You don't have anything else. Okay. No. Um, we're into routine items. Item number one is um, executive session. We don't have any votes to disclose, I believe. Am I correct? Not for tonight. No. Um, do we need to, to seal the executive yes. session minutes? Okay. So do I have a motion to seal the executive session minutes from August 23rd? So no. moved. And do we also need to seal the executive session minutes from August 15th? 15th. Yes, so moved. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Abstain. Okay. All right, before we get into the consent agenda, I want to ask the committee item 4I4, four, four, should be pulled. That is the... Um, Personnel items. Yes, that is under personnel items. It is the approval of NK Connect preschool teacher position. That should be pulled from the agenda tonight. Item 4H, the um, settle, approval of settlement of the grievance. That should be pulled for tonight. And item 8-3, which I know is part. not under the consent, but I also just wanted to remind the committee that we are pulling that also. Um, what's 8-3 is the school committee represented to the audit committee. Um, I did speak to Matt Leonard this week. He is still our representative. Uh, what item was that, Matt? That is 8-3. Uh, wait just three. a minute. Eight. Wait just a minute. Yes. You say you talk with Mr. Leonard, and he's still wait. the representative. School committee rep yes. to the audit committee. Yes. Has he been appointed by the council again? That is he's the not committee up. that operates. His, he is it. still on the committee. He is not leaving the committee. He is still there. We don't need to do anything more. He has already been appointed by us, by the council. He's just okay. Set. That was all I was asking. Mm -hmm. I'm just making sure I I, I, mean, I get that because clarified. Because the council appoints the people. Any other Nothing questions? Nothing cynical or something against it. No, no. I was just clarifying as to to make sure that the committee understood that there wasn't anything going on that I had. Anyway. Okay. I can see why you make this statement. Had a reason was crazy. All oh. right. Uh, <coughs> so, <coughs> all right. So now we go into the consent agenda. Is there anything to exempt? <coughs> all right. Hearing I none. Would, oh, okay. I would. Uh, uh, move to. Uh, to uh, remove the approval of financial items. <clears throat> and uh, Is that D1? Yes. Uh, but but actually, D, uh, D, uh, D1 and 2 in general. Should be. Just D. D1. Uh, E, 2, 3. Five. Two fives there. Both fives. I'm sorry, what was the second thing you said? Five five. One. One, two. Excuse me. Thank you for it. Under E? 
E. E2. 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 E2, E3, E5. E5, 5. Is that 5, 5? No, there's just an E5. No, I got I got E5 and I got E5. I got two E5s. I have two fives. Do we have different me? You see it's five fives. No, I only see E5 um, payment of principal association due per contract to NKSD principles. How about uh, two sets of student responses? Two sets of students. That's six. It says five. Uh -huh. Anyway. Yeah, okay. What is this? It's now six. Now six. But what? Oh, mine okay. said five. Yeah. Do you want six mine said also? Five, so well, we yeah, well, that's what I said. Mine said six. So Thank you. So we can <coughs> do anything else? Six. Okay. Mr. Cerisi. I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Was Mr. Mudge finished? Uh, yes. Mr. Cerisi. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to improve the uh, entire consent agenda. Second. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor to approve the entire um, consent agenda. Do I have anyone who would like to argue against this motion? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, I think that it's our prerogative uh, to uh, to uh, discuss items and exempt items. And uh, I guess maybe what we need to do, if, if we're going to do things like that, is maybe get a legal opinion. Uh, if not from our council, then uh, uh, maybe the Rhode, uh, Rhode Island uh, Attorney General's office. <clears throat> I'm exercising my privilege, okay, to exempt these items for discussion. All right. Um, anyone else like to argue against the motion, and then I'll ask for Against the motion? Opinion. Yes. Argue that seems it. like a trick. It seems like what we're doing is we're preventing Bill from having an open discussion of certain items that he wants to bring up. For whatever reason, I don't know, but... Uh, it seems like this was automatically done in the past. So are we changing the process now? Is this a new change that we've just established that we no longer are going to exempt except by a vote of a majority vote? There's a motion on the floor and there's a second. You're voting, you're arguing against the motion. I am, yeah. Mrs. Benson. I'm arguing against the motion because if we go back to our rules, and you were chairman of the rule committee, there has been no change. And I think there's a difference between a clad rule and customs, and what's been customary, that the people on the committee be given an opportunity to state what they do not wish to be exempt. And it has been practiced. We did it under Mr. Cerise's leadership, and we we followed it. And it's very few things that need exemption. The problem with ours, we have too many. Some of them do need discussion. <coughs> so, is this a break of customs, a break of a rule, or what? See, these are things that we shouldn't have to get into. Mrs. Carroll. There, there's no legal requirement that you exempt. If their members of the committee want to go over the exempted items, then vote down the motion that's on the table. But it's not a legal requirement that you I exempt. I hope that every time we did something that we'd have to have a legal requirement. But I, I'm only here as your attorney, and I'm giving you a legal opinion. I'm not telling you whether you should do it or you shouldn't do it. I'm saying legally there is no, nothing that prevents you from having a motion on the floor and voting on it. If you don't like the motion that's on the floor, if you want to exempt items, then vote against the motion. Well, what is your legal opinion about uh, okay. not, I think voting, we've just given that, not uh, being given for the consent agenda? This is just one isolated thing we are talking about, the consent agenda. All right. Do we have any um, discussion on anybody else who would like to discuss voting against the motion? 
have any discussion on people who'd like to vote for the motion? Mrs. Avanzato and then Mr. Cerisi. I'm just going to say briefly, I think that the problem, this isn't to prevent any kind of a trick. This isn't to prevent anyone from speaking. It's because we are, it's now 9.15, and at the last few meetings, we didn't get through our consent agenda. Every item was exempted. It's just unfair to this committee, not to mention the public. It's, it's just... Public? What public? It's, it's just <laughs> that are watching. But it's not fair to the committee members. Maybe some committee members... Please, let me make my comments. <coughs> Maybe some committee members want to sit here all night. has the floor, so... Okay, go ahead. But not all of us can um, yeah, want to sit here all night, especially on items on the consent agenda. We're going to be moving into a busy time, and with the members in this committee and the way things have been going, we're not getting through anything. It's just not fair. So we can change the rule, and this committee can vote, if that's the pleasure of the committee, to move the consent agenda items, which are pretty much routine items, through by vote. Thank you. Mr. Cerisi. One quick comment. It's a democracy. I made a motion. It's been second, and you need to vote on it. If it passes, we move on. If it fails, you can discuss the consent agenda and the exempt, exempted items. Democracy does not allow one member to bog down a whole committee. This is not about one member, two members. It's about an entire committee. That's why we take a vote. We cannot allow one or two members to bog down an entire committee. What's the question? All right. Um, any other discussion for the motion? All right. Lorraine, roll call vote, please. Bill Munch. No. Kimberly Page. Yes. Joe Thompson. No. Richard Welsh. Yes. Linda Avanzato. Yes. Melboy Benson. Would you read the motion back? It's to approve the entire consent agenda. No. Larry Cerisi. Yes. Motion passes 4-3. But I think you read me the motion incomplete. I think the motion was... Madam Chair, can we move on, please? You're not now. to approve the kind of thing, but it said... I wish you would add on to it for clarification. Was for our discussion. Read? All right. We've approved the consent agenda. We're now under item 7, unfinished business. 2011-2012 school budget. Yes. Dr. Um, OJ, is there anything to say about that? Well, that's anybody, right? Uh, no, this is usually we go to Dr. OJ, and if he has um, um, Mr. Draper, and then um, if there's anything after that, but I well, direct We're going to comment as well, right? If there needs to be comment, if I mean, there's if no there motion. Dr. OJ. I, I don't have anything on the 2011-12 school budget. I know that... Um, we have something lined up for you tonight. Mr. Draper is going to make a presentation about the 12-13 um, forecast. All right. If there's nothing in 2011-2012, then let's jump into the 2012-2013. <coughs> I'd like to talk about the 2011-2012. There's no motion on the table. There's um, nothing to discuss. Oh, excuse me. I have some items I'd like to discuss. Mr. Mudge, I have not budget. recognized you right now. We're going to be talking about the 2012-2013 school budget. I, so what you're saying is Mr. to make Mudge, it clear that I, I cannot, I cannot. We are not going, there is nothing to discuss. What do you so mean there's nothing on. to discuss? It's the budget. I want to discuss the finances for 2011-2012. I want to know. There is what nothing the, to discuss course, under there. Well, how can you so say there's nothing to discuss? We're going to move on to the next item on the agenda. Thank you. Mr. Draper. Where is your sense of, of fairness? Where is your matter? I would ask okay. you to, to relinquish the floor. Mr. Draper has the floor. Thank you. You hit. Who might as go home? Please no, don't. you stay. You could have been elected to walk out. <laughs> Okay, I would ask the committee to please relinquish the floor to Mr. Draper. Is this the 2013? 2012-2013, yes. Okay. And you want to use the uh, microphone? After that. Uh-oh. Does Valen another complaint? What we have is a follow-up to our budget subcommittee meeting of uh, 
yesterday, I believe it was, <coughs> we were asked to come up with a projection relative to the fiscal, thir fiscal year 13 anticipated expenses. Um, as you can see, we had some bullet points that we went over. Uh, pension reform, I would say, is probably number one on our list of considerations. Uh, we've received numerous communications, both from uh, Gina Raimondo as well as Carolyn Diaz at Ride, and that is telling us that our pension obligations are going to be in the $2 million plus range for fiscal year 13. Uh, local tax support will be another highlighted topic. Uh, if we're able to go to our max levy, that will cushion some of the blow, but it won't be sufficient to cover all of the anticipated expense increases. Um, as the committee is aware, labor contracts are currently under negotiation with the ESP union. Uh, that is a significant uh, area. We do not know what health care cost increases will be. Um, there's an estimate right now of 10 percent. That's what's incorporated into the uh, following page. However, we're going to have to see what actually comes forward. Uh, also, as the committee is aware, outsourcing has been considered for janitorial and cafeteria services. Uh, cafeteria is actually on tonight's agenda, uh, so that's also another area that we're going to have to take a look at. These numbers that are presented are the basics. Uh, again, to, to recap, this is what we went over in Budget Subcommittee just the other day. Uh, I'm also going to place that in the agenda for uh, next week so that you have the background information that went with pension as well as, as this conversation. Um, if we were to realize max levy increase um, and our revenues from the state, from Jamestown and other sources, and the use of the remaining fund balance stays at what our estimate is right now. That leaves us with a total of roughly $59.5 million. Um, that's our revenue side. If we go to our expense side, our salary, based on ESP negotiations not being known yet, pension, at at least what's being estimated for the teachers and all other expenses remaining stable, that puts us at roughly $62 million in expenses. Uh, it's fairly straightforward math. And again, this is somewhat conservative, and that's a $2.5 million gap that right now we're looking at. Ned, in the last budget year, we had a uh, uh, cost of increase for uh, fixed expenses of approximately $2.4 million. Um, according to what Phil Thornton told us. Mm -hmm. um, how much of that is, is included in your numbers that, uh, and how much would be left over? I mean, we got utility increases, et cetera. Uh, That's, this, this estimate assumes that by virtue of operations and other things that we do that we're going to be able to absorb those. I do believe for utilities will be stable because we just entered into a fixed agreement on gas. Um, electric is still currently under a fixed agreement. It means that we're just going to have to manage all those other those other lines very aggressively. Yes. Another thing I would add here too is this this does not even enter in the conversation is what what's going on with our enrollments. But that would our enrollments. Oh, yes. That's not factored into this discussion. We're just dealing with, with a stable state. And does it take into what uh, this committee voted on last uh, school committee meeting? Only $250,000? Only in regards to the use of fund balance. That fund balance is accounted for here. It does not account for it on the expense side because I'm not sure what's going to happen when we do our mid-year budget adjustment. At that point, we'll be able to modify these numbers. So, for instance, fund balance, what you're showing there is $1.8 million use in fund balance. Well, we know our fund balance is roughly $2.1, $2.2 million by the time this fiscal year is audited, uh, last fiscal year is audited. So it's not showing up in the expense side. We'll, we'll know that better probably November, December time frame. So at this point in time, would you say that this is conservative? <coughs> yes. So it's not a worst-case scenario, it's a conservative scenario. Yeah. 
fund balance was what for 2010? Roughly, oh, 2010. Oh, excuse me, 2011, I'm sorry. Two, 2000, yeah, going into uh, 2011 is 2.8. Roughly 2.1 million. Yeah, it was 2.8 with the capital reserve money, right? Yeah, I wasn't including capital. Well, capital reserve is pretty well depleted now. We've got about maybe 200,000 up there. So we got, we spent, didn't we have 500,000 left over in capital reserve for 2011? Maybe going into 2011, not at this point. We had the HBAC project. That was a pretty substantial investment. We made a bus purchase. I'd have, to, I'd have to check and see what what everything that added up there was. But yeah, we're we're pretty well. What was the 2011 a surplus? Five hundred thousand? No, it was 2011. Yes. Four hundred and ninety thousand. Four hundred eighty thousand. On top of the 2010, this 2010 we had 2.8 million. I, I'd have to take a look. I'd have to take a look off the top of my head. I'm not sure. So 2011, we have 500,000 left over from 2011. Could you confirm that, please, for me? Yeah, I'd have to take a look. I can tell you the aggregate fund balance. We had, we had 2 point, 2 point, I think about 2.6 or 2.8 million as of the end of 2010 or the beginning of 2011 I with capital investment <coughs> money unspent I, I i look at fund balance and capital separately but i would say well they're the same but it's the material okay so because we can take and use that capital investment money and any way we want we can use it on extra teachers we can use it on football programs anything we want the capital investment money is not restricted to capital investment we can spend it any way we want okay however I'm trying to understand this because I think if you look at the audit, the total between capital investment and the uh, general fund, okay, was like $2.8 million at the end of 2011. The reason I'm saying that because I had the end of 2010, because I think at the end of 2011, we were close to $500,000. So last June or July, starting last June or July, we had $500,000 out of the 2000, uh, the 2011 budget. So, we, you know, we're up at least $2.8 million. And from what I understand, we're on target for this year, this, this school year. We haven't, we haven't said we're going to go over budget or anything like that, except for you know, what's, what's our total additional expenditures so far this year. We know we have $257,000 because of the last meeting. We hired some more teachers today. We hired some more unbudgeted things. So how many unbudgeted items do we have in fiscal year 12 this year? For, for fiscal year 12, the committee has approved roughly $250,000 in additional expense. Well, you put approved more tonight, tonight too, right? How much, how much more tonight did we approve? Un, unbudgeted, I believe. Unbudgeted, the, yeah. Well, I believe it. the unbudgeted was pulled. That was the pre-K. Well, there were some other ones in there that referred to uh, no, half teachers one. that we went from a half a full-time teacher to a full-time. Budgeted was a point. Everything else. So that was what? How much was that, Dr. Well, anyway, that, that doesn't. I'll, I'll, I'll be speaking to you. But So are we keeping a, a running track of the amount of monies that we are uh, Planning on using from the fund balance. Again, to, to, to go back to my understanding right now, the roughly two hundred fifty thousand dollars that is approved by the committee at the last meeting is all I'm aware of as a commitment against fund balance. So that's all we have is an overrun for the budget this year, basically. At this point in time, what what will happen and what has typically happened is mid-year, roughly the November December time frame, we'll do a projection. And included in that projection will be budget adjustments based on where the spending has gone, uh, what our anticipation is for the year end. So, for instance, if our utilities were running high, or let's say we get storm damage, we're going to to calculate that and then come to you and yeah, those are unforeseen exactly. increases. But, but it could be unforeseen, or it could be reallocation of resources. Well, 
uh, the two hundred, like the two hundred fifty-seven thousand dollars, it was, should be the only uh, uh, increase right now, basically, with the uh, do, do we know of correct? Right. Okay. Are there other questions, Mrs. Benson? Did I hear you uh, correctly report in your report the purchase of a school bus? Uh, yes, that was that was. I'm not sure if it was fiscal year 11 or fiscal year 10, but recently we bought. Wasn't the school buses supposed to be coming out of the stimulus money in fiscal year 209? No. We did not make any capital purchases with stimulus money. There was a, an accessible van that was purchased with stimulus money last fiscal year, I believe. We haven't taken delivery of that van yet. That was not so we got stimulus money twice, but no purchases or anything to benefit the children. Thus is the the, the ARA money in 2009 went towards a variety of expenses. In 2010, it was exclusively for uh, contracted bus services, not for the capital purchase of buses. Do we have other questions on the... 2009, I want to follow up on mine. Well, we're on the agenda item of 2012-2013 school so budget. We cannot go forward until we go backwards. We, Sometimes we need to go forward. We go, go backwards. forward right But now. I will yield to you. You said no more discussion. No more discussion. Thank you. Are there other questions on the 2012-2013 budget, Mr. Cerisi? Not so much a question, but just a point that I'm sure is quite obvious and Mr. Draper may have already commented on. I'm projecting a $2.5 million shortfall on the hopes of getting maximum um, tax levy contribution from the town. That's correct? So, correct. Um, without that maximum contribution, you're looking at roughly $4.7 million shortfall? Ballpark, it works four up and a half million. Yeah, it works out to roughly four hundred thousand, I think, per percent. Right. So yeah. So just million. to reiterate, in the last two of the last three years, we've re received zero new tax dollars from the town. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yep. Okay. So we've received zero new tax dollars from the town in two of the last three years. Um, I think it's. I think it's a dangerous assumption, and I'm sure this isn't your assumption. It's a very dangerous assumption to assume that we're going to receive the maximum that we can receive from the town. We haven't received anything from the town in two of the last three years, anything additional from the town in the last two or three years. So I just, again, I, I know it's it's not rocket science. I know it's clear as day, and I, and I know, Mr. Draper, you're very familiar with the history on this. And I know you've made conservative, safe assumptions, but I just want to make sure that's clear to the public that you're looking at roughly $4 million next year. Yeah, that's, and that's accurate. That's, that's a very fair challenge, which is, is, a, is a max levy something that we've seen or will see? Right. I think the last one was maybe 08. Right. Um, and that's, that's really what we've been consisting on. Mr. Uh, Dr. J. This is, uh, you know, Mrs. Cerisi's point, and the points that all of you have been uh, been making tonight about this issue is exactly why we wanted to point this out. Now we have an enormous challenge in front of us um, that uh, I don't think any of us around this table knows exactly how we're going to resolve this. Obviously, we're hoping for the state to come through with some kind of uh, a revamping of this pension. Uh, problem that we're facing as a state, and, and hopefully that can help save par at least part of this problem. But uh, our best estimate is that it will only save us from part of the problem. So we're going to have to get really creative in, in trying to figure out how we're going to save some money. Um, so, and, and I know in talking to Mrs. Page earlier and in, in setting up the agenda, that we wanted to have this out there as early as possible. I know a number of you have wanted to do this just to let the community know. Uh, what we're dealing with uh, well before budget season begins so that um, uh, we can have, you know, start this discussion now and start thinking of uh, what we're going to be needing to do. Uh, absent uh, absent the, the $2 million estimated for pension, you're still in a $2 million hole. 
Yeah, figuring in yes. a problem with our Even if they solve that problem, we still yeah. have a $2 million problem. Yes, I mean, what I look at this as is that if we get the maximum amount that we can get, we still have $2.5 million that we've got to make up. We had an agonizing time last <laughs> spring trying to fit, cut 700000 and we still had to bring back 200000 that we're now taking out of our balance, I mean, our fund balance. So the fact that we're projecting now that if we get all the money that we could from the town, we're still going to have to cut 2.5. This year is the year we've all been dreading. It is the 2012 budget. Um, so it is this sort of thing of as much as we sit up here and we disagree about where to make our cuts, it's the sort of thing of this will be the time that we'll need to be rallying on some point, and hopefully that point can be that we ask the town for the maximum that we can get, because otherwise we will have an even larger deficit. Um, and we need to make people understand the value of the education that we do provide and that it is a good education and what we are doing with our students, that we are not wasting money in town, that we are using as much as we can to do everything that we can for our students. We are basically getting the best education that we can afford with our tax dollars. Okay. Um, I saw Mr. Sarisi, then Mr. Uh, Mudge, Mrs. Benson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll be very brief. I think the other the other part uh, the other point that I'd like to raise as well is that that maximum amount of new tax revenue um, we're assuming that the maximum amount of all new tax revenue is going to the school department and nothing to the municipal side. Um, yeah, this does not take into account any municipal right, obligations. Right, right, right. Which, zero. which, which would mean um, the opposite would take effect the uh, next budget year that took effect this that uh, was passed on this budget year and again this isn't this is just about factual numbers budgetary numbers this isn't a uh, you know a, a trying to be disingenuous or a tit for tat with anyone I just want to talk about these numbers that we're talking the maximum that can be generated and that maximum that of new dollars that can be generated all going to the school department which in that case, we would still be minus $2.5 million. I can't emphasize that enough. If you don't receive that maximum, you're looking at a shortfall of about $4.5 million. And again, two out of the last three years, we've received zero new tax dollars. Um, so, you know, to assume that we're going to receive anything or we're going to receive everything and the town is not going to take on any new tax revenue uh, for their budget is, again, I, I just... And I know it's very clear. I just can't emphasize it enough. And I think people really need to understand what they're going to be looking at next year mathematically. The, the, the difference we have, too, so, so the committee understands, the difference we have here is when Governor Carcieri was in office and pension reform was enacted. That was around that 2009 ARA time frame. There were federal monies made available. There was some very quick moves in the legislature to try to do some pension reform and make some obligations up. Um, and, and there were a lot of changes, as, as you all know, who were sitting on the committee. There were a lot of financial changes going on in that one year. What, what we're faced with now is we get a notification we actually just received from the state that tells us what our pension obligation is in the following year. So we have a lot of lead time on that. And the reason for that is they have a five-year smoothing. I think we've had that conversation a few times in the past. Well, that has been confirmed by Ride, so they've told us we're on the hook for this two million, and that's not consistent with what's happened in the past. Where we've seen a lot of change. So, barring some heavy-duty legislative action in the fall <coughs> to winter time frame, um, th this number right now looks very real. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mudge. But well, one thing we need to do is, as a committee send a letter to our legislators, the senators and our representatives, and saying we want a waiver from sending kids to charter schools. I figure it's costing us between eight and nine hundred thousand dollars a year to send sixty some sixty two, sixty three kids to charter schools. Not only do we have to pay the kids that go to the charter schools, in fact the state aid that we get, which is twenty four hundred dollars a student, 
for each kid that comes to North Kingstown. That money goes to a charter school, plus they get additional money. So a charter school gets more state aid, okay, to send a kid to a, a charter school than, than we get. So the bottom line is we, we should be looking at that, and I honestly believe that we should put in for a, a legal uh, exemption on the basis that our school district is not a failing district. And there's a way of bringing back at least $800,000 a year for practically, practically the price of pencils and papers. So I'll make a motion that we ask the superintendent to draft something for us uh, to, uh, to send along to our legislators uh, regarding uh, the, the uh, impact that this is having on us and uh, that, uh, that we send this along and ask our our legislators to uh, to uh, uh, seek uh, relief from that perspective. Second. All right. There's. Um, does this fall under the 2012-2013 school budget, Miriam? Yes, it certainly does. You're, ask, year. you're asking for a letter to go to the legislatures to get you some release for charter schools for no, next well, year. No, see, we, we sent a letter, yes, you yes, know, before. Yes, yes. And so, yeah, no, it, no. It, could, it could be done under the budget. Okay. Well, no, what I'm All saying right, is so the Senate. I understand what you're saying. I just want to clarification from the attorney, no, Mr. Mudge. What I'm saying she is. She said it's fine. To so send it to us. We have a motion on the floor. We have a motion and a second. Do we have those who would like to argue against the motion? All right, um, I, I'll speak up. Um, I would like the money back from charter schools. However, I believe the charter schools are a choice for people. And you can't make somebody who individually thinks that Johnny should go to um, a certain school and doesn't want to have their kid going to North Kingstown. I do believe in choice. And so, no, I'm not going to think that, that somebody is going to bring their kid back from a charter school. I, I think this, this would just be kind of a waste of time. And I know the Department of Education is pushing for charter schools. Oh, okay. Okay, motion. Yes, uh, Any other? Speaking against. Speaking against the motion, yes. Okay, I'd like to speak. Mrs. Benson and Mrs. Avanzato. Oh, you called me Benson? Yes. You speaking okay. against, I'm sorry, or for? Against. Okay. Go ahead, Mrs. Benson. I tell you. Charter School has a long route. Rhode Island was just fortunate enough to be in a state, but charter schools had a different name, Mr. Mudge, before they were charter schools. And they came out of the situation of it comparable uh, education for every child. And there was a big suit in Cleveland, Ohio, for a school of choice. They could not leave them as school of choice. They had to work with them. So I'm speaking against your motion as it's written because it's just a waste of paper. But I know that we do need some kind of relief and if you've been keeping up with what's going on you noticed in the last week that Cranston and Providence is joining together to call their system charter systems no 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 that's not correct okay Mr. Mudge Mrs. Benson has the floor I understand but Mrs. Should, Benson should has the floor corrected Mrs. Benson has the floor may I, I, may I no answer Mrs. That? Avanzato Mrs. has the floor next could right. we have some dialogue yeah. between the two of us please yeah, Mrs. Off. Benson are, are you would you like to have the floor some more yes I would if you okay. would mind yes you have the floor could I, As, could um, I, could I help co no. correct something Mrs. Benson uh, Mrs. Yes, Benson has the floor. Yeah, I'd like to check the consultant. Mrs. Benson has the floor. Schools. Go ahead. And I think that was done because of the amount of money that's coming from the state 
that's going to be coming from the town. And I spoke last. No, I'm sorry. You didn't call on a report from the budget committee, which could have eliminated some of this. But I pointed out at the budget committee that we don't know what the budget's going to be. I, I'm sure that was an oversight on your part because it was one, I'll finish it with this, it was one of the most productive meetings that we've had in quite a time. And I think the committee, I'm not going to give it because I'm not going against your rules, but I will say this, Mr. Draper, some of the things that the questions that you are being asked will lead into things that will benefit from the last budget committee. committee. Now I'm going back to charter schools. I will not be in favor of sending a letter because, as I jokingly say about us carrying students to private schools, that transportation. Are you relinquishing the floor? No, I'm not. I'm waiting so that all members will be able to. Please, let's move forward. If that it, all members will be able to, so that they can intelligently make up the choice of what I'm going to suggest. Go ahead. We have about ten more minutes left in our meeting, so go ahead. You have the well, floor. Um, I yield my time for you to complete the meeting. Mrs. Avanzato. Yes. She may have. Actually, time. I'm not speaking against the motion. I speaking for the motion. You want me to wait? Should I hold my comments or? Yes. No, I yield my but time to if, you. If, if there's no one else to speak against the motion, then Mrs. Avanzato can speak for the motion. Got it. Okay. Um, I agree with um, search for excellence within the public school system. I also agree with choice, but in my opinion, the choice should come in the realm of real choice where people can choose to go outside the public system. There may be some sort of voucher thing. I mean, I'm not suggesting that we do that. I just don't agree with having a dual system within the public school system that taxpayers are responsible for both systems. To me, it's just adding to the burden of the taxpayer. Let's improve the excellence of the public systems. We're, we're draining the money from the public school system over to the charter schools. Um, and to me, that's, that's, that's not the way to go. You put, so I would agree with sending a letter. Any other? Um, I, um, <laughs> then whenever you respond, we just everybody gets to speak once. So uh, anybody else who wants to speak for the motion? Yes. Oh, sorry. Mr. Mudge. Uh, look, at, I think we ought to go back and look a little history here. A couple of years ago, this school committee did authorize, okay, a letter to go to the governor. And I don't know if we ever got a response to that. No. But the, the school committee did. I'm disappointed we'd have it. But nonetheless, you know, I'm not saying that charter schools aren't appropriate in certain circumstances. But we are a, we are an, a, 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 an achieving district, an achieving district. And if somebody elects to leave our achieving district, then let them go to a private school. Let them pay. It's my personal view. And especially the charter schools that they're sending them to are getting more aid than we are getting for our own kids in the school district. This is outrageous. And all I'm saying is let's go for an exception. And in Mrs. Benson, with regard to your comment, the school committee of Cranston is fighting that because it's draining their money out of their school Budget I I astronomically, you I know. Said. So Mr. I just, the floor. So I just yes. want to clarify this, and, and, and you know, we we went through this three years ago. I think we ought to now, and we we I asked for the legislators that were speaking up here uh, that they visited us uh, uh, several months ago, and they said it was kind of too late. They would be glad to introduce a bill if this if a bill. Okay, to get an exemption based on the fact that we are an achieving school district. And that's all I'm asking for. If our legislation, legislators introduce a bill, then, you know, so be it. Okay, so, uh, so uh, I, I, I still can't fathom, Madam Chair, is I asked the question of this, the, the, the uh, 
commission of education in, in, the, in our library, and I said, gee, you know, I try to figure out why kids should go to a charter school if we're, a fa if we're not a failing district. And I said, gee, what are all these reasons? I said, is it because they don't like the Polish kid, they don't like the Jewish kid, or, or the Negro, or somebody else? And what are their reasons? I try to discount all of those reasons. And I get down to the fact that, you know, give me a valid reason when you're not you're, you're, a, you're an achieving school district. And I couldn't come up with one. And I, asked her, I asked her specifically this question, and here's the answer that I got. The answer, the question I asked was, you know, why are we doing this? And she said, Mr. She said, you know my name. Point okay. of order, what, she, what she did say is, I don't know why the Chair, parents of North Kingstown I don't know why the parents of North, please. Madam Chair, please. this discussion is way off the Madam, topic of the motion. Madam, I would Madam ask Chair, that we call the question, right, please. Right, Thank right. you. Madam Chair, please. See, what okay. was happening we, was, we, I'd we, like to finish. I, I, I would you like, need to wrap it up with the next I would Mr. Like Mudge, it is almost finish. 10 o'clock, and we have a few more things. So please wrap up your comments in about 30 seconds. Yeah, let's not twice, let's not really look so, at all the issues. You see, wrap the, it up and vote. vote. Right? Let's wrap it up and vote. See, that's the problem with us. Just okay. Okay. So the reason is that the commissioner of education said, "I don't know the reasons," and I'll never forget this. The, the parents of the in North Kingston want to send their kids to a charter school. I don't know the reasons, but I support it. Now that's one hell of a comment to make. Thank you. Okay. okay let's get take the roll call vote, please. Kimberly Page. No. Joe Thompson. Joe, you didn't, you didn't talk. Yet. I can't Joe hear. Joe Thompson. Yes. <laughs> Richard Welsh. Maybe. I don't know. No. <laughs> Linda Avanzato. Yes. Melvoid Benson. No. Larry Cerisi. Yes. Not for that. William Mudge. Yes. Motion passes four to three. There you go. Dr. Urge, it is. Um, we basically have time for one more item. Is um, and I know that the committee has may have had other questions for Mr. Draper, but I want to make sure if there's anything that that you need to um, finish up tonight. Uh, Mr. Draper, do we need the the truck uh, uh, item on tonight, or can that wait till the next meeting? Is that the uh, the Quonset point? Uh, we just need. We need enough permission so that when school gets started, if we have repairs that we need to take, um, I mean, we can do them under an emergency. So with, Phil's, with Phil's authorization. Yeah. Well, what's wrong with the town? If, if, I, if I may, I, I wouldn't mind yeah, if we could do this quickly to have the Quonset Point, the RFP, and the assistant superintendent. Uh, you know, I know that mm -hmm. they may generate some discussion. I understand yeah, we'll that. Talk about that. Mm -hmm. Maybe the RFP may have to wait till the next time because it's going to generate a lot of discussion. I understand that, but I, I, I think we need the Quonset Point issue because we need to have a mechanism for fixing our buses, and I need an assistant superintendent real bad. So I'm hoping that we can uh, advertise for that tomorrow. Mr. Sarisi, you, you put a motion on yeah, the floor. Yeah, Madam Chair, I offered a motion to approve agenda item F. One. Second. And There's a motion on the floor and a second. Is there any discussion yeah, yeah, yeah. against this? The Quonset truck. This is I, for approval of purchase order for Quonset Point truck and trailer for minibus repair. Is there any <coughs> um, any discussion against it? Yes. Mr. Mudge. Well, first of all, I'm disappointed that this was put in in the last meeting on the basis that, and I think Mr. Welch uh, mentioned uh, something like this too, that that uh, uh, we just haven't done, a, to me, a, a good job of trying to get the town to help us here. Now, maybe they're telling us to go jump in the lake can I, and can we I can't do that. The, well, let me just finish okay, this. Bit, sure. Okay. And, and, uh, and get an exception. However, you know, there, there are service contracts and, you know, the, you can't tell me that there's a sole source person. What we should be doing is going out and getting sole source bids from anybody around here who can fix buses and get the best price, okay? We have competitive sole source bids. Now, if we've gone through the process and people have bid on, this is what I'm going to charge you per hour to do this, and, and everyone comes in with the same expertise, then we can award it to that. 
But we still, I don't believe, have really done a thorough job, number one, in terms of getting competition involved with here and get the lowest bidder. And second, you know, I, I, I really want to understand how we're using the town services and why we can't do it, Dr. Dr. O'Shea. Uh, if, if I may? Yes, Dr. O'Shea. Uh, Mr. Draper and I met with um, the town today and with um, people from uh, the various organizations that, are, that we have agreements with um, to um, fix our buses. And um, we have collectively realized that th there really isn't um, a lot of that happening, to tell you the truth. Uh, our agreement, uh, in the best case scenario, is with the fire department in terms of fixing these buses. And uh, even then, um, our interaction with them has been minimal in the last few years. Um, and the reason is that they have a fleet uh, and, and a workload on their own where, um, so where they have a lot going on already. So we are committed to doing the best we can with them and letting them know uh, Mr. Draper today provided a, a, a maintenance schedule for our fleet of minibuses that uh, they are presently looking at. Um, and they're going to give us some feedback on, on how well that can happen. But what this would do would give us a mechanism that is, is at a reasonable rate um, under, uh, and Ned can talk about this a little bit better than I can, um, that is at a reasonable rate that is, is under the contractual rate that we would normally be looking at and in the, in the event that we cannot use the town. And, and they have told us that there will be a number of cases where the town would have to tell us, well, you'll have to wait a couple of weeks because we have a few items in line. Now, we may need that minibus fixed by tomorrow morning. And we can't wait. And, and by the way, the town does the same thing. They have their own people who fix the fleet that they have, but they also have a mechanism in place in the event that it can't happen right away and they need something faster than that. So that's what this is asking for, is just to have a mechanism in place. We can talk down the road about if, if this is not the right company or if this needs to be rebitted out, I believe that kind of work has already been done. But if we need to do that again, we can. But for right now, this gives us a mechanism in the event that the town can't help us with the agreements that we have, that we have a place that we can go to make sure we get these things fixed in a timely manner. Lorraine, roll call vote. Um, can you get this question? No, this question. Joe Thompson. Would you read that again, please? This is to approve the purchase order with Quonset Can't Point. Can you on this end? To approve the purchase order with Quonset Point Truck and Trailer for minibus repair. Is it a sole source? Yeah. No. Richard Welsh. Uh, yes. Linda Avanzato. Yes. Melvoid Benson. Um. I have one question to ask before I make a vote. I have something to add to the motion, which would be you the can't, matter. You can't add anything to the motion at this point. Oh, so I vote and make an amendment to the motion. What are you even voting? No, voting. You, have to, you have to vote. Could you explain yourself? Yes, Robert's Rules of Order say that when we're taking the vote, you have to vote yes, no, or abstain. That's for sure. <laughs> That's for sure. That's the three ways of your vote. Yes, so what is your vote? That is what Mrs. Berglund has asked. I'm prepared to give a vote without clarification. Do you abstain? Uh, no, I'm not abstaining. Okay. Larry Cerisi. Yes. William Mudge. Uh, I'm voting no on the basis of the sole source, although I look forward to go through a working out. So this doesn't happen again. We're using the sole source too cavalier, I think. Okay, next person. Kimberly Page. Yes. Okay, motion passes four to two. Madam Chair, motion to adjourn, please. Uh, Second. If I could ask that we just vote on the assistant superintendent that would really help to advertise that position tomorrow morning. I think we're going to have to, to do that on our September 13th agenda. Would you make a mo uh, We need a lot of discussion on that. Would you uh, we have a motion to adjourn and a second. There's no discussion on this motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Yep. I am. Thank you.
Please note that I oppose to the adjournment.